So America would become the most blessed, most prosperous, most powerful nation the world had ever seen. It was all there in the words of John Winthrop prophetically in Massachusetts Bay. And the houses of the, of the village, many of them are from the 19th century, many of them from the, from the 18th century, many of them are from before America. It's right next to Salem. And the house they live in is older than America. It was there before there was the United States. It goes back to colonial times. Now the house itself is modern. They have television and kitchen, microwave, room with computer and printer and fax. But if you go down to the cellar, you see there it's made up of carved stone, reminding me of Jerusalem, cut rock. It's the foundation of the house. And it goes back, it looks the same as it did in the days of the 13 colonies. So there's a big disconnect between the house, what's in the house, modern, and what the house actually is. You see it in the foundation. The house is from a different time. So with America. If you look at it now, you would think in many ways that it's a nation that is foreign to the faith of God. That even bans the mention of the faith of God more and more. And the values it now champions here and around the world often are extremely anti-biblical. Yet the thing is, if you go downstairs into the cellar, into the foundation of America, you see the purpose for which it came into existence, for which the house stands. And there are signs, there are, the, in the foundation you can see what the purpose of this is. So we want to go downstairs this 4th of July. American civilization as we know it was founded on two grounds. The first was Virginia, Cape Henry, Virginia Beach. It was begun by a group that sailed the Atlantic had, and they, when they came to land, they put a makeshift cross on the sand, in the sand, and they bowed their heads in prayer, and they dedicated this new civilization to God. It would lead to the founding of Jamestown, of Williamsburg, of Virginia, dedicated to God and for the purpose of spreading the gospel. The other one was Massachusetts Bay, and that in many ways is even more critical. Founded by the separatists known to us as the Pilgrims who came to the New World to, find, to found a society based on God's Word and religious freedom. They sailed the ship the Mayflower. They sealed a covenant called the Mayflower Compact. In it, the new civil, and in their compact and in their founding, that they, they said this new civilization was to exist for God's glory and to spread the gospel. That was 1620. Ten years later came a, another great move, and the, it's called a Puritan exodus from Europe. The man who led it was called, his name was John Winthrop. The Puritans set out to create a people, it says in the New World, who would be, in their own words, would be religiously, peaceably, civilly governed, and, and their, life, their life and their example would win the natives to the faith of God. On March 23rd, 1630, they set out, about a thousand of them, in ships led by John Winthrop in the ship, the Arbella. While aboard the ship, he wrote down the vision for the new civilization that would be known as America. He said this, we are a company professing ourselves fellow members of Christ, Messiah, knit together by this bond of love. There stands between us this cause between God and us. We are entered into covenant with him for this work. And he wrote, We must consider that we shall be as a city on a hill. The eyes of all peoples are upon us. A city on a hill. This is the most lasting symbol of America, not the bald eagle, not the flag, that has ever been given. From 1630 to now, it came at the foundation, was embedded at the foundation of the house called America. Where did he get it from? He got it from Messiah. So here now, think about it. The vision of America here came from John Winthrop who got it from Messiah. So here you've got something radical. You have a nation 
that is founded on a vision that Messiah, Jesus, gave to his disciples as if it was going to be a civilization of disciples, which was their dream. Now, of course, America falls and, and has sin and all those things as well, but it's unique in that it was founded with this radical, radical vision that it would be as if it was a nation, a civilization of disciples. Imagine there be a land, there's a land that's founded to be a Christian utopia. Well, it already happened. It's called America. And that is why, with its, with its following God and whether it's not following God, that is why it became such a unique civilization. Where did Winthrop get his word? He gave a promise to, to America, a charge. It was a prophetic word and a warning. Where did he get Moses? He got it from Moses. You see, Moses... He got it from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses gave a word to Israel as it was about to enter the land. That's the book of Deuteronomy. Right by the river Jordan. He says, you're going to cross the Jordan. Well, now you have another exodus from an old world. And the leader was looked on as a Moses, John Winthrop. They're about to enter the land. And John Winthrop uses the words of Moses to get given to Israel as they're going to enter the land. And he gives it for America. They're not crossing a Jordan. They're crossing the Atlantic. And so you have this. So not only was America founded to be a godly, Christian, holy civilization, but it was also founded as a new Israel, not replacing Israel, but after the pattern of ancient Israel. At one point it was proposed that the new language be Hebrew. Imagine that. And the holiday, what's the most American holiday, goes before the 4th of July? Thanksgiving. That was Thanksgiving is the Hebrew Feast of Tabernacles taken into America. And so that, there's something unique here. So the foundation of the House of America is without question dedicated to God, dedicated to Messiah for God's purposes. That's what made it unique. Not the, not the land, not the economy, not anything else but this. And even when as America was secularized. Still this affects America. Uh, even up to modern times. That why does America have this sense of, of the sacredness of the individual? Because every individual is made in the image of God. From that you get equality. From that you get the, the freedom of conscience. That it doesn't matter what the government says. You are first made in the image of God. And that no government is above God. That's why when totalitarian ideologies rose in the world like fascism and Nazism and communism, America was the key defense from stopping it from covering the entire world. You can see it throughout. And even the sense that America has had that we have a mission to the world. Where did that come from? That came from this. It got secularized, but it's from here. A light to the world in some way. You see, you see this long after the Puritans in the words of George Washington. John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln. You even see it in America, the words of America presidents in the 20th century. John Kennedy spoke of America as a city on a hill. Ronald Reagan spoke of it again and again. It was America's spiritual foundation that led it to become a refuge for much of the world. Much of, we're here, much, most of us are here because our, our forefathers and mothers were fleeing something or looking for something. It became the foremost champion of freedom around the world. The words and vision of John Winthrop were prophetic. He said, in effect, from the Bible, if America would follow the ways of God, then the blessings of God that came on Israel would come upon America. Amen. What blessings? Peace, prosperity, security, power. So America would become the most blessed most prosperous, most powerful nation the world had ever seen. It was all there in the words of John Winthrop prophetically in Massachusetts Bay. Now people quote from John Winthrop the vision of the city on the hill, but they rarely quote what else he said right after that. He said this. It was a prophetic warning. Also based on Moses' words in Deuteronomy 28. He said, but... But if we turn away from God, if we deal falsely with Him, if we go after other gods, the gods of our prophets like money, our pleasures, then in effect 
he said, the judgments that came on ancient Israel would come upon America. Now interesting, and I'm, not going, I'm going to speak more about this in a moment, a few moments, but the harbinger is basically, when I was led to write that book, is seeing the same patterns, the judgments of Israel with America. But it's a prophetic warning that he gave embedded in the foundation of the nation. So what happened to ancient Israel? God blessed it, but in the midst of its blessings, it turned from God. It began subtly at first, then increasingly brazenly. It drove God out of its public squares, drove God out of its culture, drove God out of its lives. It promoted sexual immorality. What was evil, it now called good. What was good, it now called evil. It offered up its own children as sacrifices to the gods and then began persecuting the righteous who still upheld the Word of God. What happened to America? The same thing. We have followed the footsteps of ancient Israel in its fall. At the height of blessing in the 20th century, we turned away from God. Slowly and subtly at first, and it's not that it's just one moment, but there are key landmarks like removing prayer from the schools. That was once a big thing. Now it's hard for us to even imagine that teachers would lead the children in prayers to God. But then it was, then it was radical to do what they did. We drove God out of our, first subtly, then, then it became, now it's manifesting full force. We drove God out of our public squares, out of our government, out of our schools, out of our life, out of our culture. We embraced and promoted sexual immorality, just as Israel did. What is of sin, we called good. What is of God, we have called evil. We have killed not thousands of children, we have killed 60 million children in abortion. We now see signs of the persecution of the righteous coming, canceling, boycotting, castigating, prosecuting. You can see it evident, becoming evident in the 1960s, but it has not stopped. It has advanced. Even with conservative presidents, the culture has continued. It's like a ball on top of a hill that starts rolling very slowly and then gets more and more momentum. So it's racing, and that's where we are now. America's racing. Things that would have shocked us years ago cause a flood of outrage and uproar now barely get any notice. It's as if now America is at war with America, at least what America was. And the nation that's called by the name America is not the same nation that most of us or many of us were born into. Uh, last night I was walking, I was uh, doing a late run to, to, the to the supermarket for diapers, uh, and I'm walking out, and an old guy is walking, you know I mean, most people don't say hi to each other, they don't know each other, you know, they don't say anything, but he just, he goes, he goes like, listen, he goes, happy fourth, happy fourth. But it was almost like the fourth of July has become almost muted in, in view of everything else that's happening in the culture. A month of celebrating other things. It's almost as if this is almost like a, almost like, it's almost like a, 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 an underground thing. Of course, it's happening all over, but it's not like it used to be when this was, like, this was it. Oh, America, it's not like that anymore. It was almost like that. And it's the basic foundations of American civilization, those things I told you about, not just, not just the dedication to God, we know that, but all those things that came from it are now being undermined and overturned. Freedom of speech, dissent, conscience. No, I don't go along with a mob. I don't go along with a crowd. Certainly the sanctity of life. What we're watching now, some have called soft totalitarianism, where everybody, think about it, a totalitarian dictatorship government, everybody has to say the same thing. We're watching that in America now. Not coming from a dictator, but coming from the culture where everybody has to express the same thing, and if anybody says something different, they are punished. And what, you know, in, it's, in, it's in communist and fascist regimes where when you, that happens, the person has to confess their sins against the state publicly. Well, we're watching people confess. They say something, then they're confessing and confessing and confessing. Where words are changed in order to change thought, and thoughts are changed to change reality. 
where children, think about, think about a, a, a dictatorship, to, a totalitarian. Children are indoctrinated in those places from early childhood into the ways of the new ideology. That's happening now in America. Children are being indoctrinated. Just, just within the last, I think, two days, uh, the, 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 the greatest, the largest union of teachers, I think the NEA, voted to put in a leftist doctrine into all schools that they could and in which it goes against things like heterosexuality, teaching from youth. I was, this is not in the notes. I, I told him I'm a little looser on the sex. I was just praying with a, 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 an elderly, uh, well, a great grandmother who's in tears saying, my great granddaughter thinks she's a boy. She's in tears. This is what we're doing to the children. The new ideology seeps into everything, into media, into government into the judicial system, education, schools, children's cartoons, businesses, corporations. You notice it's, it's more and more every year. The army now is, is, is in it. The sports are in it. Everything. And this new totalitarianism is, at, is actually is not just bad because of that, but because of what it is. It's at war with the ways of God. And it's following the fall of ancient Israel. You see, the way it happened is when Baal worship and other gods came in, it was first started, hey, you know, just, it's okay. Be open-minded, tolerance, do your own thing. Try this, add a little Baal to your worship. He'll help you with your crops, add this. It's all do your own thing. Once Baal gets in power, that all changes. No more tolerance. Now it's every knee shall bow and confess the name of the new God. And so now we are here, crush everything, crush any dissent. We are now in America that was founded on the Word of God, where the Word of God is increasingly banned, and sin is increasingly worshipped. It happened in the days of Elijah, when Baal went from something hidden in the shadows to accepted to the state religion, where you, if you didn't bow your knee to Baal, you'd be branded an enemy of the state. Well, that was Elijah. Ahab said, you, you troubler of Israel. And Elijah said, no, no, no. I am not the one who troubles it. You are the one who troubles Israel because you have rejected the God of our fathers. An America where the Ten Commandments are removed from the halls of public squares and that which the Ten Commandments, the law of God, prohibited have now become the laws of the land. You see, what America didn't realize in the last century is when you take out God even a little bit, it's not going to stop, and it's not going to remain neutral. Something else is coming in. If God goes out, something else comes in. If God goes out of the culture, something comes into the culture. If God goes out of the schools, something else comes into the schools. We're watching now. We saw the going out. We're watching the coming in. It will never stay neutral. They removed God from the schools. And what has happened now? Kindergartners, first graders are being instructed into sexuality and to immorality that wars against God. They're told they're not even men, they're not even boys and girls. From, and you, you know, it starts one step and it keeps going. So, okay, we'll do it a little bit. Parents going to opt out. Now, parents, you cannot opt out. Now it's not just high schoolers, it's middle school. It is now kindergartners. The Ten Commandments go down. From, any, from, from public squares, it's illegal. And yet in American embassies all over the world, by the order of the president, they have up has gone the flag of the rainbow pride against God. So the commandments go down and immorality goes up. It's no accident. They said, listen, if you have a problem, you're in the wrong place. We're here to take, we're here for truth here, not political correctness. Because political correctness is going to be gone one day. And the only thing that's going to last is this. We all stand before God. Forget what the culture does. God loves all, but he also stands, he also stands for what is right and what is true. He calls all to repent. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.